Have you ever really sat down and thought about pro wrestling phrases and terminology? What sounds pretty normal to us probably sounds crazy to a non-wrestling fan. Like Fatal 4-Way? How about giving a wrestler a big rub? Gorilla position? Screw job? All these sound a little bit suggestive. The reason I bring this up is because this video is about the game TNA Impact. The name roughly translates to tits and ass impact. Sounds like something your dead end uncle would order on pay-per-view at like three in the morning. Anyway, TNA was the number two wrestling promotion for some time and gathered some good momentum. So much good momentum, they tried to convert it into a video game. So who shall be the publisher? They tried EA and it didn't work out, probably for the best. They tried Rockstar, it didn't work out, probably for the worst. They eventually landed on, of all things, Midway Games. Midway was dying, dying at this point. These dudes were already in the grave. They were just waiting on a dirt to cover them up. Dirt in this case being millions of dollars in debt. So the TNA video game would be revealed like all good games are at the Spike TV Video Game Awards. Talk about a fever dream. These things were completely unhinged. Damn, I love video games. <laughs> we're here to present the world premiere of TNA Impact. Woo! I love any game where I get the powerbomb, Kyle Drive and Pummel without having to get neck surgery or back surgery. You can play as my husband, Kurt Angle, or if you'd like to play as a girl, you could play as Samoa Joe. That's a good one, hon. It's funny because the actual game would feature a grand total of zero women wrestlers. So time would pass, delays would be had, and we would eventually get the game on September 9th, 2008. Or as I've written in my script, September 9th. 2008, along with this commercial. I just always loved that this game store just exclusively sells Midway games. No, Kurt, you destroyed two out of my 56 copies of Stranglehold in Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. How could you? Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks ain't even on the Wii. What kind of operation are they running here? Shout out to Ed, Ed and Eddie Miss Adventures, by the way. So is TNA Impact any good? Well, to start things off, Paradox Games, the same developer that developed Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks, is behind this. That game is great, but on the flip side, these guys are also behind the backyard wrestling games, which are terrible. These games would average out to be mid, and I think that describes things here perfectly. Jumping into TNA Wrestling, you'll be surprised to find out that this game looks fantastic. From character models to the lighting itself, the game doesn't even have those jaggy shadows that a ton of games from this era do. The game also runs at 60 frames per second, except for Jay Lethal's entrance for some reason. But this meant a lot to the developers, and keep in mind, this was way before frame rate was used as an internet selling point. At 60 frames per second. You need it for that much action in the ring. For a fighting game, combat game, whatever you want to call wrestling or any of that, 60, 60 frames a second is everything. The game is very well animated, including how moves and reversals blend into one another really, really impressively. Also, the commentary is very basic. Mike Tanay and Don West are really into it. No way! No way! It's just that a lot of what's said is just generic stuff. Oh, he did this move. Oh, he did that. Just repeats over and over again. Direct from Mexico, the Hurricane Rana. Direct from Mexico, the Hurricane Rana. Direct from Mexico, the Hurricane Rana. But the great visuals don't make up for the meh gameplay. To describe TNA Impact in one word, it would be limited. Limited match types, limited roster, limited game modes, limited weapons, limited moves, limited creation, limited entrances, limited arenas, all by a publisher who had limited time to live. The game is rather simple. You have strikes and grapples along with their heavy counterparts. But the thing is, is that there are so little moves and options in this game. You could throw a wrestler into a corner, but there are not really much corner moves in this game. There really aren't even any behind grapples either. Each character has one finisher and it can only be a front grapple. So someone like Scott Steiner, for instance, he has a camel clutch, but 
but it's treated as a pin. Now, I'm not a genetic freak, but even I can tell that's not normal. The few moves that you do have are repeated throughout the roster. Like I swear, Abyss in this game is just Kevin Nash with an Abyss mask on, because Nash and Abyss, for the most part, have the exact same moves minus the finisher. Now, the moves that are here are very impactful. That's a good one, hon. Seriously, these moves look great. And there's this overall floaty aspect to this game. Like, I'm not complaining, and it's no surprise when you see what game this team made next, but there's truly nothing like this game at certain points. <laughs> Like you can punch dudes out of mid-air or just send them flying. The reversals are also really cool in this game. Oh, nice bounce off the road. You have a reversal opportunity, but your opponent can reverse the reversal, but you can reverse that reversal. My minor gripe is that you have to look all the way at your own name bar to time your reversal. The modern WWE games get this right by having the icon appear above your head. Outside of the ring is you could do some brutal moves with the guardrail slash side of the ring, but you can grab the only weapon in the game, a steel chair. It's not even under the ring or propped up somewhere. They just lay it randomly on the ground on the outside. I can't wait to use the Dudley boy's iconic weapon, a steel chair. How about Sting? He was always threatening people with a steel chair. Jeff Jarrett, that guy's always hitting people with that musical instrument. Of course, I mean the steel chair. Winning a match is a race to get your opponent's health red. It's represented by this SmackDown-esque body health that shows how damaged individual body parts are. But I don't think this thing works properly. Like I can hit 10 neck breakers in a row and my opponent's head health is still green as ever. I rarely see damage to the head in this game. As a matter of fact, there's no blood in this game either outside of the wrestling canvas already having blood on the ground somehow. That's just gross. Why is this game even rated T? There's no blood, there's no swearing, which is odd considering that this is TNA. But anyway, when you damage your opponent enough, you can go for a pin. But this game has the whole move the analog stick rapidly to kick out and recover thing. I hate stuff like this with every fiber of my being. I was playing with my PS5 controller, but I stopped and switched to the submarine controller because I didn't want to get hit with that stick drift. The submission system is also just quick time events, though you do have to understand that stuff like this was the norm when this game was released. TNA Impact has all the foundation to make gameplay great, but it's just really limited and gets old very quickly. Not to mention the glitches. What is going on? <laughs> It's also worth noting that there are really no matches here, just the standard stuff like tag, three-way, four-way, with the main standout being the ultimate X match, which is pretty fun. Now we'll talk about story mode, and people have told me that this is the best part of this game, but I'm sorry y'all, I, I don't really see it. One of the main things to come out of this game was the wrestler Sua Su 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 Unalive? Ah, screw it. Suicide came from this game who would be a mainstay in TNA for years. You are him in this story. You are winning matches until LAX tells you to take a dive, which you don't do then promptly beat you up so bad that you'd wish that they hadn't beat you up so bad. That's a good one, hon. Apparently they dump you in Mexico and you have amnesia and don't remember anything besides wrestling. That's the one memory I'd like to hang on to, just wrestling and nothing else. This game uses that trope where you are so badly injured you have to have plastic surgery that gives you the convenient excuse to create your guy. Does anyone know any other games that do this? I know Skate does it and Metal Gear Solid 5, kinda. Well anyway, we create our guy with this limited character creator. Why does the athletic build have a muffin top so we join up with a mexican promotion who also conveniently uses a six-sided ring and win matches we head back to the states to an event that's also conveniently using a six-sided ring there's a surprise match against james storm after winning we get a tna tryout where we beat up some jobbers like the scotsman 
after we get a contract, that's where things turn out for the worst with this mode. You enter a little saga where you have to team up with Eric Young. I hate tag team matches in video games because you essentially have to damage your opponent and hope that your pin isn't interrupted when doing so. 80% of the finishers in this game end with a pin, so you can't even hit a finisher, then run to knock their partner off the apron. Also, when your opponent tags out to his partner, that's just another fresh body that you have to wear down. It's like winning four matches in one. I can't stand it. This shit takes up about 50% of the story, it feels like. And overall, the story just doesn't do a good job of variety because the game's limited options. There's no different match types to spice things up. The game doesn't throw any special objectives or things to do. It's just win this match. Okay, now win this match in Japan. Okay, now win this match. Okay, now win this match in Japan again. After a while, you eventually win the tag team titles against LAX, but you are attacked afterwards by this dude in a drippy mustard mask. This leaves Eric Young out of commission. And all I can say is thank God no more tag matches. Now it's ultimate X matches because it's the only other match type in this game. You go up against brain dead AI too. Look, look at me, I'm gonna get the ultimate X. <laughs> Kevin Ash takes you under his wing, by the way. It is revealed that Jeff Jarrett is the man behind taking you out since the suicide days. He has Eric Young hostage with these totally not suggestive photographs. Hey, yo. You have to win matches or I guess they kill him. I'm not really sure. We are told to not tell Nash or our other buddy Samoa Joe. So we do dirty work for Jarrett, where the idea is to face Jeff Jarrett in a one-on-one -on -one match and just lie down for the three. But we don't. In a previous match with Samoa Joe, we whispered in his ear what was going on. So we are told to not tell Nash or Joe, but we just tell them anyway. They save Eric Young and we face off with Jeff Jarrett, who's like, wait a minute, I know that voice. You're suicide. Like, bro, we've been on this roster for what I assume is months at this point. How are you just now coming to this conclusion? I'm going to break your back and make you humble. I want to show you my fucking tenants. We beat him and we win the title on a regular episode of TNA Impact instead of a pay-per-view. And after completing this story mode, there is literally nothing else to do in this game outside of exhibition matches. The servers are cooked so no online. The TNA game is the definition of wasted potential. The gameplay can be chaotic fun, but everything else just gets old so fast. In the behind the scenes development videos, you can tell that these dudes were super confident in their game and really passionate. One of the things I'm really proud about with TNA the game is the fact that we've uh, taken something that's new in TV and we've created a game out of it that I truly believe is the best wrestling game out there. Uh, we have competition and we've gone up against that competition and I really think that we can blow them away. A sequel would benefit the game and there were plans for this to be a yearly thing, but Midway died. That's probably why this game felt so rushed. Some work would be made on a sequel. The story would revolve around escaping from an insane asylum. And here's some menu UI from the game. But this game would never see the light of day and neither would a TNA sequel, or would it? Since Midway's bankruptcy, all their assets went up for sale. Most of it went to Warner Brothers, who they themselves are ironically looking more and more like Midway by the month. The TNA game license went to South Peak Games. Who the fuck is that? So we would get a sequel, technically, and I really want to stress that word, technically. TNA Impact Cross the Line would release for the PSP and Nintendo DS, and these are just ports of the first TNA game, but with like Hogan in it. And there's a story where Curry Man stops an alien evasion. No joke. But the development team was bought by THQ, who holds the WWE license, and together they would create one of my favorite wrestling games, WWE All-Star. A game that uses the TNA assets and makes an over-the-top fun arcade game out of it. It's kinda like a sequel. You'd think we get years of these type of games, but THQ went bankrupt too. Man, these companies need to start doing some Wikipedia begging or some shit. This is getting out of hand. This time, there's no saving. The development team behind these games would just close, and they were just given the right to make UFC games too. Just look at the history of the developer's name. They were Paradox Games, then bought by Midway and made into Midway Studios Los Angeles. Then they merged with the San Diego studio. Then they became THQ San Diego. No company is surviving this. Outside of a 
mobile game, we would never get a TNA game again. And with the crazy freefall TNA had with its relevance in wrestling, we probably never will again. Right? Well, with the seemingly friendly business nature that TNA and WWE have, while we would probably never get a TNA game, we can see them in a future WWE game, maybe? Something like a complete Kurt Angle showcase that covers his WWE and TNA career would be amazing. Just make sure you include this moment. <sighs> Where's my suit? Where are my titles? Where's my underwear? Are you wearing my underwear? No, Kurt, I don't wear underwear. Oh, oh I got you. Free baller, huh? 